my cat is here. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> you can, like, barely see her. Um. Oh. Yes. Yes, I know. Her name is Sprite. She isn't a year old yet, and she is absolutely hilarious. Um. <laughs> but anyway. What? Aww. Oh, she likes my desk. Um, at any rate, I hope you enjoyed that cat content. Uh, today we are going to be making a candy cuff. Specifically, we're going to be making a multi-stitch cuff, which kind of looks like this. I know the pattern's in black and white. Avoid the writing and all that on it. It was for therapy. Um, but yeah, it's got... It's kind of hard to see, but a multi-stitch cuff looks like this. If you select, um, like, show show rows inside of candy patterns, it'll have, like, numbers on it, as you saw. Um, so that's how you can tell if something's a multi-stitch cuff. If something's not a multi-stitch, it's usually either X-base or payout. You can tell if it's payout because it'll look, the beads will look vertically. Um, and if it's X-base, there's not really patterns for that. X-base is just X-base. But this is a multi- but this is a multi-stitch cuff. Um, I chose a small one to make because I don't have a lot of string, but I did want to make something to get it out there to kind of show how it works, because I know that when you start making candy for the first time, everything can be really fucking confusing. So, you're going to need string. I have a little bit of string. I got this one from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has good string. Uh, uh, beads. Got these from Bead Tin. We're left over from another project. I didn't have enough to finish it, so I just I have those sitting around. And you are going to need scissors. Uh, could be any scissors. Doesn't matter which ones. I have these really fancy ones that I was given as a gift that I use, uh, but you can use really anything. And oh, that's right. Uh, the base skills that you are going to need to know for this is how to tie off cuffs and just how to make a single, but I'm going to explain all that, so... Don't worry. Um, I know the pattern's in black and white. I'm going to do it inside of red and yellow colors, because it's originally a mini fire cuff by someone kill till. Uh, so you can do it inside of any color if you want. I'll leave the pattern inside the description, so that way if you want to do it inside of its original colors, you can. It's red, orange, and yellow. Doesn't take a lot of beads, so it's, it's a good, like, stash killer project. Anyway, first thing we are going to do is we're going to get string. We're going to extend this string out to about as long as both of our arms. This might actually take up the rest of the string that I have. It will, okay. We're gonna extend it out to both of our arms. Length. So spread out both of your arms. Do this and like see if it stretches across. Um, you can do less if you want. I prefer more because that means I need to add string less. Uh, if it's too much to handle though and you want to do less, that is totally fine and I will be showing you how to add string. Um, let me move my camera so that way you can actually see the pattern. Okay, I hope this is legible. Um, I'll probably zoom it in instead of post-processing because I can't just do that on my fairly cheap camera. I need a new one. Uh, but first off, um, this light color down here that is um, in ones. Let me flip it over so you can see better. This light color down here in ones, that's going to be our first row. And we're going to make a single out of those colors. So every single one bead here, I'm going to make yellow. So I open up my yellow bag. I take my missing string. Oh, oh no. I take my found string that was on my lap. Um, I take it. I undo any knots that might be in it because it got tangled. Do, 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 do. And then... Uh, down here, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, uh, beads inside of the one row. Meaning that if you typically fit a single that is about 28 beads long, this should fit you. This cut's gonna be too small for me because I have bigger hands or so. Um, but this is just an example. So, the light colors here, the light ones, let me actually grab a pen real quick so I can mark down like what's a different color and what isn't, because I'm colorblind, so I know that I have issues with seeing dark colors and colors that look alike. So, this is a light color. Anything with like a green dot is a light color, so let me do that all for you really quick. We have a dilemma. 
she let me try and can i take the paper from you please please thank you enjoy some quality sped up cat content She is so adorable. It, it hurts to have to take her off of my desk, but, uh, come here. There you go. Run along now. She looks so disappointed. Um, anyway, so upon further inspection, this cup actually requires three colors. So I'm going to make it with red, yellow, and these sparkly red beads. Also from Beadton. <laughs> Beadton was the last place I ordered beads from. They do good business. Their prices are okay so um turn this over so you can see it all of these ones here everything that's like the lightest color this 27 i highlighted inside of green everything that is this middle color is highlighted in blue and everything that is super dark is highlighted in purple so first off we're going to do this row of ones which is going to comprise of Mostly light colored beads, but one, two, three darker colored beads. So I'm going to use yellow for my lighter color, and I'm going to use sparkly red for my um, darker color, but not my darkest color. My darkest color is going to be red. So let me get my string, and then you just start. If you want to, you can grab a pen. Actually, I recommend doing this. Grab a pen, grab a pencil or whatever, and start marking them down as you do it. So. We will put on one, two, three of the first bead. And then we mark it down. And then we put in three more. Like so. And then we mark it down. And this is entirely step by step. Nothing's going to be cut out of this because I want to make sure that this makes sense. And then we're doing three more. One, two, three. That's nine so far. So one, two, three. We do three more, and then at that point, after these three, we're going to change colors, because this one right here is in blue. So we're going to put on three more. One, two, three. We're going to mark them down. One, two, three. And then this one right here, this one is of a darker color, because it's highlighted in blue. So we're going to take our darker color, or whichever um, secondary color you have, we're going to open it. We are going to take one out, because there's only one there, and we're going to put it on our string next. So we have that, and then we take it and we mark it off, and then we do three more light colored beads. So we do this, this, and this, three more, and then we mark it down, and then we have another darker bead. So we grab our darker bead and we put it on there like that. So it looks like that so far. And then we mark it off. And then we have one, two, three more light colored beads. I highly recommend to do it in multiples of three or five, just so that way you don't get lost. So we put in one, two, three, three more. We mark it down. There you go. Very, very gently setting her down. And then we put in we put in three more uh, light colored ones. So we have one, two, three. See if I can get it in there. We have one, two, three. Looks like this. We mark it down. Then we have one more of our lightest bead. So we take our lightest bead, we put it on there. And we've got that, and we mark that down, and then we have one more of this darker color. So we take our darker beads, this one, we put it on there, just like that, and then we mark it off. And then we have three more light colored beads. So, got one, two, three, and then that's our, that's our first row. So we're gonna take this, and we're going to mark off what we've done. We're going to take this, 
and we are going to tie it, like so. I prefer to tie it using a few knots, just so that way it's extra secure. Um, I would recommend at least two. You can tie it as light or as tight as you want to. Um, I personally like to leave mine a little loose, so I do that. I, I tie it, I take it, I cross over both sides like you're starting to tie your shoe. Oh no. <laughs> take it, cross both sides like you're starting to tie your shoe, like so. And then you take it and you go under and then you pull. And then you do that again. You take it, you go under, and you pull. Very basic. Um, if you want to do a knot that's a bit more intensive, you can cross them over. Take your tail end, so this end right here that doesn't have anything connected to it, you can wrap it over your working end twice again, and then you can put it through the um, circle there, and that'll create a stiffer knot. Um, that is generally less likely to come apart, although you don't need to do that inside of a lot of cases. So, you have your tail here. We take this. We cut it off, and then we throw it out. We don't need it anymore. Um, and then we have the rest of our string. So, first thing we're going to do is we are going to insert it through this bead right here. This bead, um, so that way we're facing toward the front of the cuff. We can tell it's the front because it doesn't have the sparkly red right next to it, which is one of the last beads that we put on. So we insert it through here, um, the bead uh, to the left, my left of where the knot is. So we, we put it in there, just like that. There's a little bit of a description just so that way you can see. We pull it in, like so. Okay, and now we will start building on that. The next thing that we're going to do is we work from this way to this way, we're gonna do this too. Um, and we're gonna be moving up inside of a diagonal pattern, so next we're doing this two, and then this three is the third row, and then this fourth row is that row, and then the fifth row. Um, so we're doing this two first, which is a darker color. So we're gonna grab our darker color, we're going to put it through our string, if my cat will stop trying to eat my string, and then we're going to take our bracelet, and then we are going to we are going to skip a bead, and we're going to insert it for the next bead. So we're going to skip this one right here, and we're going to insert it for the next one. So we insert it like so, like this. Let me pull this apart so that way you can see it better. We insert it like that, and then we pull on this tail end, and then the bead when we pull hard enough. It nestles itself in there, right on top of the other bead, just like that. Um, that's the result that we want. Um, you should be pulling this rather tightly. That sucks, but it's one of the way, it's just, you should be pulling it tightly, otherwise it's probably not going to work out as well. So, you're gonna do that, and you're gonna hold it, and then you mark it off on your paper, and then you go to the next two, which is a lighter color. So we grab, so we take our tail string, inside of our fingers, like so. We grab a lighter bead, we put it in here, and then we do the same thing as before. We skip a bead, and we go through the next bead after that, and then we pull. And then it'll nestle itself in there, kind of like that. So here is a better depiction of what's happening. Came out through this bead, skipped a bead, came through this one. So this one was on top of the bead that we skipped. So, and then we mark it down on our paper. We mark down this two, and the next two is also a light color. So, <clears throat> we get our light color bead. We put it on the string, like so. And we do the same thing as before. We skip a bead, we insert it, and then we pull. And then it does that. This is what creates the multi-stitch pattern. So, we mark it down, and next we have this one that's highlighted in purple. This one is our darkest bead, so we're going to open up our darkest bead, put that down. We open up our darkest bead, uh, we grab our tail end, 
we grab a dark bead, we put it on there, we skip one, and then we go for the next one. And then we pull. And it looks like that. So then we mark off the dark one. And next we're going back to this middle color that is highlighted in blue. So we pick our string, we grab a middle color, we put it on string, we skip a bead, we skip, we're coming through here, we skip a bead, and we go through here. So... There we go. Now it looks like this. So now we mark that off. And now we're going back to our lightest color. Um, as highlighted here in green. So we're gonna pick our lightest color. We're going to put it on the string. And we're going to bead through. We're gonna skip a bead, string through. You should be stringing through one of your um, lighter colors for this one. Um, and you can tell which one you should be stringing through because this one here that is right next to the two, this one is the one that we're coming through. And this is the one that we're stringing through. So if you ever get lost, you can use that to try and figure out where you are. It's gonna start twisting. This is okay. Just just let it do its thing. It'll saw it'll fix itself. So we mark it down. And next we're going back to this medium color. So we grab a medium color. We put it on our string. We skip one and we go through. And as you can see, it's kind of it's kind of starting to gain some kind of shape here, some kind of like circular cuff shape. Um, it doesn't matter if it's twisting or anything like that. It's it's going to just just keep going. We will it'll it'll sort itself out more than likely. So we marked that down. The last one was a last one was this one. We mark it down, and then we got a lighter bead. Put it in, go through the next bead after skipping one, and then we pull. Let me flip this over. You see, he should be flipped over. Okay. So we mark that down. Now we have another lighter bead. Yes, another lighter bead. So we grab light bead, we put it on the string, we take it, we skip one, and we go for the next one. So we pull that, and do not worry, the second row is the hardest row. Um, other than the first one, because you have to keep track of like, oh, okay, we're skipping this and all that. After this, it gets better. So, we did that. We mark it down now. Next, we have another lighter one. So, we grab a light bead. We put it on our string. We skip one. We put it through. Like so. We pull it. Okay, he is, he is twisting, and then we, we take it, we mark it down, and next we have this medium color, so we grab our medium color, we put it on the string, skip one, go to the next one, Okay, and then we, we take it, we mark it down. As always, keep remembering to mark down. If, if you don't, you might get lost. I, I always mark down, have your string. Next is the dark color. So we grab one of our darker colors. We put it on the string, like so. We skip one, we put it through the next bead. 
making sure that everything doesn't get too tangled. Okay. And we mark it down. And next are two light beads. So we grab a light bead, we put it on there, we insert it. If it'll get in there. <laughs> There we go. We insert it. We pull. And now we have this We have this dilemma here where the next one we go into is this yellow one because we're supposed to skip one. We go into this yellow one, but this red one's right here. So, just do this. Put a light bead onto your string. Skip the one that you're supposed to skip and go through the next bead, ne the next light colored bead. So we Try our hardest to get our string in there, because our string doesn't like to cooperate. So we, we put it in there, we pull, then we pull, tighten everything up, you know, and then next we take our tail end of our string and put it through the first two bead that we inserted. So the first two bead that we inserted was a medium color one, so it's, it's this red one right here, so we put it through there. And then we pull. Um, from here, I would suggest tying off. So here's how that works. Um, you take your string. And right here, inside of these little spots underneath this red bead, um, where there is no bead, there's just like empty space, you put your string in there. So you take it. You... And this is a little bit hard. You take it, you insert it like so. So this is going through this space right here. So, and then we take it and we put it inside of this loop that we have created. We put it in there and how many times we want to, doesn't particularly matter. So we, we take it, we insert it in, we pull, we insert it in again, we pull, and then we just pull it. We just pull it, and you're gonna end up with this like knot thing here. Just keep pulling, take your fingers, pull it down, and pull it as hard as you can. And that's how you tie off cuffs. Um, I like to do it after every row. You can choose to do it more scarcely. That's just how I prefer it. So, next we're gonna be working on row three. So mark those down. The row three starts right here. Not right here. Row free starts on the second three that there is. Uh, because we're going inside of this diagonal pattern. Like that. So we're going to start with a medium color bead. One of these. I'm going to put it in there. And then we're going to go through the next bead that is sticking up. So inside of my case, it would be this yellow right here, because it's the next one sticking up after the red. So we're going for this yellow one. So we grab our tail end, if I can get it without it falling off my desk. We, we stick it in there, should go in fairly easily. We put it in there, we pull. And that is the beginning of our third row. So we mark it down. And then we do another medium colored bead. So let me grab the string. We put it in there. And then we take it and we put it through the next bead that is sticking up. So we put it through this yellow right here. So we're coming out of here. We're coming out of here. Um, and then we stick it through this next bead here. The next one that is sticking up. So we, we take it. We put it in there, we pull, and it looks like that, and then we mark it down, and yet we have another medium colored bead, so we grab it, put it on there, we stick it through the next bead that is popping up, in which case that is the first darkest color bead. 
And this is why you don't need to worry about it twisting as long as you can keep track of where everything is. Because in doing this, it's going to sort itself out. So we, we insert it into there. And then we pull. And then see, it's starting to sort itself out. So then we mark it down. And then we do another one. So we grab it, we put bead on string, and then we go for the next one that is popping up. Which, in this case, looks like it is going to be this um, darker red. So the darker color. So we, we take it, we stick it in there, like so. Let me sort this out so that way it's more visible. We take it, we stick it in there, and then we pull. Like so. And then we take it, we tighten it by pulling the string. And if your hands get tired at any point, you can tie off anywhere. As long as you go through one of these empty spaces in between the beads and you do the loop thing and you pull through, you can tie off anywhere you would want to. So, we are going to mark it down, right? And next we're gonna go with another medium colored bead. So, we're going to grab another medium colored bead, stick it in our string, and we are going to insert it through this yellow right here. Like so. And then we take it and we pull. And we pull super hard so that way it keeps its shape. We, we untwist it, we take it, mark it down, next is a dark colored bead which is going to go through this medium colored bead. So we grab a dark colored bead, so you want to see, we have this right here, no we have this one right here, this is a dark colored bead because it's the darkest uh, black on there and it's highlighted in purple, we're going through a light colored bead. And at the end, after we put on the bead, we're going to go through a medium colored bead. So we put on our dark colored, and then we go through our medium colored. Like so. Then we pull. Like this. And now it's starting to kind of fill itself out. So we mark that down. And next is a medium colored bead. So we grab our medium colored. Like so, we put it on our string, and then we take it, and we put it through one of these yellow ones. There we go. Whoops, I think I put it in the wrong one. Yes. Okay. If your string kind of looks weird, that means that you probably put it through the wrong one. So let me put it through the correct one this time. There we go. And then we take it and we pull as is usual. And then we mark it down like this, and then we grab another one of our really dark ones, right here, and then we put it on the string, so I can manage to do it without shaking too hard. If your string starts to kind of fray like this, um, just take it and cut it. So take it, put the bead on there, and then insert it through the next light bead that is sticking up. Okay, and then we mark it down, so we take it, and we find it, and then we go like that. Next we have medium colored beads, so take our string, take a bead, put it on there, insert it through, thanks Sprite, we insert it through here, 
Um, if it's got like this string right here, the string that's kind of, hope I can display as well, the string that's kind of um, pulling here like this, uh, you don't insert it for that one. You insert it for the one on the top. So if it gets twisted, that's a way you can tell. Um, so put it in there. I can get it in there. That is. There we go. And we take it and we pull. Mark it down. And then we do more until the end of the row. So inside of some cases, you might end up with a knot inside of your string. Um, just, just try your best to undo it. This doesn't happen to me that often, but sometimes it does and it's annoying, so. Take it. And pull it apart, just like that. Uh, your knots might be different. And if your string's starting to twist, take it, hold it in between your fingers very tightly, and stretch it out. Kind of like that. So now it's not as, like, twisty anymore. Because we stretched it out. We, we solved the crinkles in it. So, last one I did was for this dark red bead right here. So we are going to mark it down. And we are going to get to our last two. cat's back. That's fine. He's just helping. Pull. Mark. She is just here being a friend. Take it. Put another one on. Then we put it through. This last one right here. And then, once the cat, once I will get the cat to move once I put it in here. So if you end up with something like this, take your tail end of your string, if it won't be too light in here, take the tail end of your string um, and just undo the, the, the twist that you made. Okay, so you may be noticing that you have another spot left for another bead. So, she just, okay. She just jumped off my shoulder. So what you can do is, you've noticed, we're at the end of the row. This is the end of the three row. We go back to this beginning, and we hit the bead that we missed because we're going diagonal. So this is actually our last bead back here, and it is a medium colored three. So we take our bead, we put it onto our string, we take it, we put it through this one right here, put it through this one, and then after we put it through here, we take it and we put uh, the tail through here. So that way the bead ends up on top of this uh, yellow one. So, it again because it's fraying. Okay. 
No, you can put it in there. People, the one disadvantage to tying your cuffs after every single row that you do is that they tend to get, um, they tend to get, it tends to be hard to put the string through the hole of the knot because there's a knot there, not a lot of room. So yeah, oh, it looks like I did that wrong. Okay, yeah, if it's starting to do like this kind of thing right here, um, that's because this uh, red bead should have been on the bottom and this pink one should have been on top. So, <clears throat> to fix that really quick, I am going to take it and, or at least to try to fix it, I am going to remove this from here. So remove it from the bead I just went through. I am going to flip this over. Actually, no. No, I think that is right. It's just being weird. Okay, whatever. And then we take it and we go through this red one right here to bring us to the start of row four. We're over halfway there. We can do it. So we mark down this last three right here. Let me try and let the sun catch it. So we mark down this three and then we go to this four right here because we're going diagonally. So this line here, this line here, we go up to this four right here. And this four, it's a light colored bead. So we, well, it's a medium colored bead actually. So we grab our medium color. We put it on our string and we put it for the next one that's sticking up. And then we follow the pattern and we do that all the way around. You may have noticed that I didn't tie off after the last row. That's because it was kind of a pain to actually get it through the bead, so we'll tie it off at the end. You can tie after the row if you want to, but just know that getting it in there might be a bit harder when you go back around, so. So notice how as you're doing it, it's starting to form that multi-shape and it's starting to make the picture of the pattern, which is really, that's what we want, that's great. And if it seems like you messed up somewhere, that's fine. You could just frog it and redo it. Hopefully you don't have to redo too much. I picked a small pattern for this video because I wanted to definitely emphasize like something more simple. So dark bead, dark bead, for the next bead sticking up like that. And then you take it and you pull. And remember, we went diagonally, so we have this one that we skipped at the beginning of the row. We will come back to it. Next is a dark four. Medium four. Dark four. Mark off this darker four. Dark four. Is 
through the beads sticking up. Pull through. And once again, make sure you're pulling tight. So we mark down that. We have another dark four. Dark four on string. Next bead sticking up. Light, uh, lighter four, medium four, I guess I would say. Put it on the string. Stick it through. And then we pull. Like that. It's starting to really come out correctly now. Then we mark it down. Then we have another light four. So we grab our light bead, put it on there. Then we stick it for the bead sticking up. And then we go back to the beginning of our row that we and we and we do this dark four that we skipped before. So grab a dark colored bead, stick it on your string, and then go and then skip this bead down here. Um, let me say it better. Skip this bead right here and go through this one and then go through this one too. So you will skip the bead, go for the next one. So we put it in there. There we go. So now it's where it should be. Then we take it and we go through the next bead like we did the last rows before. This is what causes us to have to do that diagonal pattern. Then we go from here. And then that's row four. This is our last row. So we mark down row four and now we're right here on row five. We are right here uh, because of this diagonal pattern. So we start here with a dark five. So dark five, stick it through the bead sticking up, pull. Mark it down. And then we go next dark five. Hold through. Next dark five. Go for the beat sticking up. I can get it in there since my string is starting to fray again. Cut it to create this nice little finish here. We put it through the next bead that is sticking up. We pull. We mark it down. One, two, three. One, two, three. Another dark five. This whole row is dark fives, but you know, go for the next bead that is sticking up. Take it, pull it. Cross it off. I still encourage crossing off um, until you get really good at making these. Uh, take it, put it through. And then keep doing this all the way around. So put it in, take it, we pull. Like so, cross it off, take it, put it in there, put it through here, and pull. think if I started like doing like bead with me live streams that could be fun I think uh, that's that's for me to think about and to get input on depends on how I'm feeling For the next one that is sticking up. So, cross it out. And now we're going to jump back to the beginning of the row since we finished over here. So, we have these two dark fives that we're going to do. So, dark bead, string, next one that is sticking up, right here. You put it for there. Then we pull, 
and we mark it off. It's this first one at the beginning right here. So we take it and we cross it off. And then we take our last bead, which is yet another dark five. And we put it through this bead right here. And then we go through this one afterward. So same thing as before. There goes my pen. We put it through this. We put it through here first, this red bead right here. It's medium red bead, I should say. The pull. So it looks like that. Um, and then we take it and we put it through um, this one right here. So we're going to take it. We're going to put it through this bead right here. So we take our string with nothing on it. We put it through that bead and we pull. And now we tie it off so we can take it. We put it through the em one of the empty spaces um, that is by it. We cut it. It's harder to do this if it's fraying. So I'm going to elect to put it through here. So I'm going to stick it in there. Now I can pull it up like this. And then I take it and I, I take the string and I pull it like this to get it next to the string that is coming out of the hole. So that way it's easier to tie. We put it through the loop once. We put it through the loop twice. We take it and we pull. Like so. And we pull as tight as we can. And that's it. That's all there is to it. This is your first multi-stitch cuff or your fifth or however many you've done. Um, you can fold it flat. looks like this. At least the way I did it does. And obviously, this is too small to fit my wrist. Like, I, I cannot get this on. Um, if you need to make the pattern bigger, you can open it up inside of the pattern editor and you can edit uh, the length of it to make it bigger. Which is what I would have done inside of this case. But, here you go. That is how you make a multi-stitch cuff. I hope this helped you.